Hi, I'm John Bonagura, and this snippet is focused on pericardial effusion in the dog. You know, pericardial effusion is an under-recognized cause of cardiovascular dysfunction in dogs, and I'd like to focus on the common causes, clinical presentations, diagnosis, and initial management of pericardial effusion. Most pericardial effusions are hemorrhagic in character. Aside from regional fungal infections, infectious causes are uncommon. For practical purposes, causes of hemorrhagic pericardial effusion in dogs are either idiopathic or associated with cardiac or heart-based neoplasia. Idiopathic hemorrhage is more important in dogs less than seven years of age, though it does occur in older patients as well. Right atrial hemangiosarcoma, aortic body tumor, and mesothelioma of the cardiac lining cells or the pericardial lining cells are the most common causes of pericardial effusion in dogs more than seven years of age. While echocardiography is relatively sensitive and specific for hemangiosarcoma and aortic body tumors, mesothelioma is difficult to diagnose without a biopsy sample. The clinical picture is dominated by one of two presentations. The first is sudden collapse or syncope. This is due to hemorrhage into the confined pericardial space, compression of the heart, and cardiac tamponade. The lack of cardiac filling reduces cardiac output and leads to hypotension. The second clinical presentation is that of chronic right-sided congestive heart failure. This can be explained by compensatory renal retention of sodium and water. The classic triad of physical examination findings are first, muffled or distant heart sounds, second, jugular venous distension, and third, pulsus paradoxicus. The latter finding, by the way, is a marked inspiratory fall and arterial blood pressure that can occur in pericardial effusion related to varying left heart filling. Careful palpation of the femoral pulse while simultaneously observing the respiratory cycle may reveal this finding. In terms of diagnostic tests, a calibrated standard three or six lead electrocardiogram will often show reduced amplitude voltages in multiple leads. Electrical alternance is more common with very large effusions and is caused by the heart swinging within the pericardial space. Radiographs are often suggestive of pericardial effusion. Remember, look for a globoid heart and pulmonary underperfusion. The definitive diagnosis of pericardial effusion is obtained with echocardiography and mass lesions are seen in some cases. Careful stabilization is usually obtained with pericardiocentesis, and this must be done under local anesthesia in most patients. Long-term management includes surgical options, such as minimally invasive procedures to create a pericardial window. But because the prognosis really depends on the underlying disease, a definitive diagnosis is necessary. It can be helpful to consult with a cardiologist, oncologist, or surgical specialist about various therapeutic approaches and outcomes. Well, I hope this snippet has prompted you to consider pericardial effusion and the differential diagnosis of sudden collapse, ascites, or pleural effusion in the dog. For more information, please visit us at cardiaceducationgroup.org. And thanks for watching.